YouTube. I thought of making this video because the weather's starting to get better this year. It's springtime, everybody wants to get out and about. They've stored the scooter in the shed, in the car, wherever, in a spare room, and now they want to get and use it and it won't work. So what we're going to do is certain things to look at, to find out why it's not working after it was working when you put it away in your shed and to preventative measures. What to do for not happening the next time you store your scooter away. Now I've lifted this scooter from a customer. This one actually kept outside under waterproof cover and all the elements over the winter. Now of course when we went to use it, it wouldn't have worked. We did keep the battery, which is this one's removable, in his house, but kept the scooter and the seat outside. It was dry, but don't get me wrong, dampness, snow, whatever, ice, minus 10, whatever it was, the scooter won't move. Even if you can switch it on, the status light comes on, which I'll show you here. Okay, you can see the status light there, telling you there's no flash code, there's no errors, the power is right up, um, the light's working at the front, horn's not working, he's got a bell. So, okay, so what is the problem with the scooter? Why is it like this? Well, whenever he presses to go forward, he hears a click from coming somewhere, but it's no moving. Now the reason for that being is the brake is seized. Now I know the brake is seized because if I put it into manual and try and push it, it won't work. So that means the brake is seized. Now the brake is located at the end of this lever. On this particular scooter, the lever comes out here, the top, and other scooters that come out the back. Now that's how it looks like. You've got the motor and then you've got the electromagnetic brake. This one has a a lever on the end of it as well so you can put it into manual and what actually happens in manual this will spin as you can see and then the motor will turn but if the brake seized that won't spin and it won't drive the transaxle now this is an old brake here it's in manual but the disc in itself here which is in here it won't spin seized this is one an electric brake you can see the disc is moving, so it's freewheel. So that's what happens. If you leave your scooter in a shed over a long period of time, that could actually seize on to this disc here. Dampness, corrosion of the disc itself, because it's not spinning, it will seize on. I'm not saying it will, I did say it will, it will seize on, it may or may not, you could be lucky. Especially if you keep it outside, the chances of it seizing on is quite high. So, if you are keeping a scooter outside, I would re recommend it. Move it ever so often. If you're not fit enough, able enough, get a member of the family, put the battery in there, and start to move it. So that's one problem. The brake season on costs you money. So what I've done now is, I've got another transaxle here, exactly the same, identical to this, so I can show you what the parts are. So, this is electric brake here. This is the motor, this is the transaxle and your wheels. Now, if you had to replace the electric brake, you've got to take one, two, three bolts, and that bolt's right underneath there. So you're going to be struggling maybe to get at that bolt, so you'd have to remove the motor, and you remove the motor with that bolt there, and then the bolt on the other side. The motor comes out, undo the cable ties with the wires, and you'll get easy access to the Allen key bolts here, replace the brake and then join them up here. Also what to have a look at is all these connections here. These ones are nice and clean. This is the one I had in the workshop. Thought I'd dismantle this so you've got a clear view of how, to, how the electric brake looks like and, and where it's situated. So it's in drive, it won't move. Manual, it will move. So I know this brake isn't seized. And if I physically look at that disc, as I move it, I can see it spinning backwards and forwards. That's the disc in there. So that brake's not seized. It should, technically speaking, work. Let's have a look at the touch pads. Now, this one was kept outside. Let me lift, take the seat off. Makes me 
easier to dismantle it when the weight's off it. So if you have a look here, a lot of corrosion on these pads here. Don't use emery paper. Um, use cleaning fluid. Very, very fine. Um, I use a carbon fibre pen, but I'm very delicate with that. So you don't want to take off the, the, the covering of these touch pads. And also not just these touch pads, the other touch pads. Now, that's because it's been left outside. Water's got into it, even though it had a waterproof cover, and that then would cause an issue, you starting it up, intermittent faults, cutting out, etc. So if you've left it outside, these are the problems that you'll be faced with. This could also happen if you keep it in a damp shed. So it's always handy to get a member of the family, if you can't do it, to move the scooter backwards and forwards, maybe once a week. Right, so that's a problem with electric brake because the scooter won't move. Don't get me wrong, it may be not move because there's a problem inside the transaxle, but that shouldn't happen if it's been left stationary. Another problem that can occur is you left the scooter. For a long period of time in the shed, two, three months, you've no charged the battery, which, which is not very good. So to find out if it is a battery, you switch it on, no lights are coming on, nothing, battery could be dead. Now this particular one, you could take in the house, charge at least once a month, uh, minimum eight hours or overnight. Okay, it's quite happy, put them on charge. This one here will take a two amp uh, battery charger. It's got an off-board charging socket and this one also has um, a charging socket at the tiller head. Makes it easier so you don't have to use the charging socket away in there. But it's handy putting in the house, keeps the battery topped up. But in this case, you didn't keep it topped up, you've kept it in the garage, you put it on charge, you've not done it for two months, and nothing happens. So what you want to do is first of all find out the voltage. You put it to DC, which is the one with the straight line and dots. And what we're going to do, if yours has this connection here, like most bigger scooters have, two outside ones, doesn't matter which way you put it in, with 25.6 volts, so there's plenty of power in the battery. When the battery is fully charged, it'll be around about 26 volts. If the battery is empty, it'll be somewhere around about 24.4 volts. So it is important that you have one of these to give you a kind of clearer picture of the condition uh, of the battery voltage. So I know this voltage coming here. I've looked after it, it's okay. But if you put it there and you don't get any voltage, there's an issue. But what you would have done, you've got your two amp charger, what you would do, you put it in your shed, you stuck it in there because you want to use it tomorrow, you stick it in, the light will come on and go straight to green. You've left it for two months, you've not been charging it up, it goes straight to green. Oh, it's fully charged. No, it's not. Oh, maybe it is. Depends how, you, how you've looked after it. But usually what sometimes happens if it goes straight to green without you using it for a while, it could be an issue with the battery or within the charging circuit of there. But if you've used it well before and it was dry and you physically drove it in, then it's very unlikely there's a problem with your charging circuit, but it could be a problem within the batteries. Now, if you have a battery pack here, like this one here, some of them have fuses in them. Most of them have fuses or circuit breakers of some kind. Now this one has, uh, where are we? There's a spare fuse in there, so that could be a fuse, your charging fuse socket. This one's a red, which is 10 amp, but some of them have fuses inside the battery. So if you come along here, you've got zero volts, it could be the fuse that's blown in there because you've put it back on charge and suddenly it could be a bit of dampness in there, it could have blown the fuse or you get a, a small power surge, it could have blown the fuse. So it's always best to charge at least once a month. If you can't do it, get somebody to do it for you. Have it plugged in, don't plug it into the mains, but you can set up a timer in your shed. If you don't have, if you don't have mains in your shed and there a problem there, you've got to run the extension cable through the window, it's cold in the winter, 
it has to be charged. Bigger scooters, you can take the batteries inside and charge them. Real ones, quite easy. If you can't do it, get somebody to do it for you. It will save you money in the long run. This is the busiest time of year for us engineers. Weather's great, everybody wants to uh, head out. And of course, yeah, let's get the scooter going. It won't go. Number one, electric brake seized due to dampness. Number two, you've not been charging it. So it is very important that you charge it. Save you a bit of money in the end. Now, a two amp charger is okay. It will charge batteries that are below a certain voltage. Like in some of my other videos I showed you, this will charge more or less a dead battery because it automatically puts it in, but that could bulge the battery. If you use a bigger scooter and you have a bigger battery charger, let's say this, five amp charger, five amp chargers, usually I should with these bad boys here, 34 is, what was this, 34 amp an hour battery this one. So you wouldn't get this combination, you would get that combination. Now when these batteries go flat, this charger will not charge them up. The battery has to be above 16, 17 volts for this charger physically just to kick in. So what the handy thing is, if you can do it, and if you have maybe a car battery charger, just to try and recover them, what you can do is take one out, stick it on your 12 volt charger, leave it but i would leave it for about three or four hours but i would monitor it every half an hour because it could get warm i would put a little current into it and leave it for three or four hours then take it off and put it on the other battery so then you've got two batteries that the voltage have, have come up and what you do is you quickly put it on the scooter and quickly attach your five amp charger or if it's a bigger scooter an eight amp charger of course if you've got a big seven amp an hour battery you'd let it charge with your 12 volt car battery charger longer. Now it's not recommended to do this all the time, it's just to try and bring the batteries up to the correct voltage for your battery charger to kick in. Join it up, charge it, but as you're charging it for the first time, or maybe charge it about six, seven hours on your five amp charger, then take it for a drive and then put it back on again. Because sometimes when the batteries are very low, uh, I would say very low, 10, 10 volts is low. If it's anything below that, I'd buy a new set of batteries because you'd let it go. But I have seen people recovering it, so trial and error. If you're not sure what you're doing, just get yourself a new set of batteries or give it to somebody that knows what they're doing. These wee ones here, two amp chargers, we'll charge these batteries here. If you need batteries, give us a shout. We can supply them, usually next day, two days delivery. We can supply any size of battery to you direct. Mind you, you have to put them on. And of course, in a battery box like this, there's lots of screws to take off. There's two batteries sitting in here. This particular one is fitted with two 20 amp an hour, so in between 18 and 22. This one's a 12. Some of these you can get 15 amp, but that's usually what's used with your two amp chargers. So it's important, as I say, charge your batteries up. You'll save money in the long term. Right, what else can go wrong with the scooter? In storage, you've got your electric brake, you've not got, um, it's not charging, so you've got two faults here. Another problem is your control box. Why do control boxes suddenly just go? They're working fine, you drive it in, and then you come to start it, it gives you an error code, control box error. The reason for that being is if you put it in a shed, it's damp, dampness can get into it, if you're taking it out in, a, in a, a wet day, you put it in, it doesn't dry out properly. If you put it in a house, it's a different matter altogether. If you keep it in a house, in a warm room, it's okay. But the electrical components inside uh, the control box, you've got some relays in there for, for switches, etc. That whenever you press it forward, the relay will go and tell electrics what to do and what the motor to do and how, how fast to drive it, etc. These can seize through time. So, yet again is, ask a member of the family, go out, take the key, switch it on, drive it back, drive it forward. You've moved it a little bit. Everything gets used in there, things will dry out. If you can't move it due to space issues, what you could do is get somebody to put a brick underneath the transaxle, lift it off the ground, 
use it with this charger, it's off the ground. You only need one wheel off the ground. And then if you drive it, bit of sellotape on here, insulating tape, let it spin round for a wee while, things will start to heat up. No issue there. Everything's moving, the electrics underneath here get used, the motor gets used, the electric brake. If it was going to seize, it will unseize itself because there may be a bit of corrosion on here. It was just about to seize, but you've started to turn it and it will clean itself, heat up, dry. Um, and then everything works. So the more times you use the scooter, really the better it is. Storing it away, okay, you can't use it. Get somebody to physically come in and move the scooter for you. Other things that can go wrong, again, dampness, corrosion, that's, we live in Britain. Uh, you may live in, in the States or, or Spain, the sun's great. You won't have these issues, but we have a lot of corrosion issues over here with the dampness. Let's say I showed you the, the connector of this, which corroded. I would check all, every single connector if it won't move, every single connector. And it's always best, highly recommended to get it serviced um, from a local engineer or we can do that if you're, if you're in Scotland, that is. But if you're away there, get a family member. If you're not sure, give us a bell what to check. Um, have Put a wee comment below the video to see, you know, why is it not moving? Usually storage, batteries, connections, brake, control box. Control boxes come in different shapes and sizes. Let me see if I can find you some. Right, I've got some control boxes here. This is off a, a short rider. What is this one off? Cadets. Comes with some wires out. Those can seize up just the same, even though it's sealed. Dampness can get into it in the wee gaps here if you've been out in the rain. Rhino. Very small. Dampness can get in here in the connection can go as well. You've got your S-Drive one. As you can see here, some of them have actually covers. There's four screws here with seals round about it, but dampness could get in. This is a, another S-Drive. This is 120 amp, or this one is a, a 45 amp, usually smaller scooters, smaller controller. Sit underneath here. Yeah, this one's underneath here. So some, some of them have a, a plate that you can take off. This one hasn't, you've got to take the body panel off to gain access to this one. These ones can be expensive if they do go. Can send them away for repair, but it's always best to get a new one because the repair cost in itself is more or less the same as a, as a new one. Whereas a shop later one, see this one's here. We can repair these at half the cost of a new one. So if you just send us it to the head office, we'll get that sorted. But always contact us before you send us something. And if you send us anything, always make sure you give your details. I've got customers sending me control boxes. I don't know who they're from. <laughs> anyway, I said control boxes. When I was away looking for control boxes, I did actually find another electric brake. Now, this is exactly the same brake that's attached to this one. One that I've replaced in the past. Now what can happen with these, it is in manual at the moment, the disc is moving, but it's faulty. And it works on and off. But what happens through time, these get very weak. That's why we've always got them in the shelf. If you need a break, give us a shout. If they're not on our website, the link will be below. But if you can't find the break you're looking for, send us an email, send us pictures of your scooter and the brake. This scooter is a Kimco scooter, but it may be rebadged. By rebadged meaning, it's like if you've got a Vauxhall Cadet, you can also get an Opel Cadet. It just depends, rebadged, different name on it. If I buy a container load for lack and sell all these with my name on it if I wanted to. So what's happened with this brake is, over time, it was heating up the spring inside, the solenoid that was pulling it, has worn away, therefore as it was using it, it was it was pulling too much current, or it was, there's another one there, there's another faulty one here, it's exactly the same brake, as you can see these brakes go commonly, and of course this is the spring 
they're very busy and people leave them that one's moving around as well slightly a wee bit sticky but it's because it's because of the age they get weak that one's moving about more for you now when you hitting it so what happens through time is they bind on they cause more resistance the motor has to work harder and because the motor has to work harder it draws more current therefore your needle goes down faster so if you're driving your scooter after you've had it in storage and the needle go down faster it may be one of two reasons one is maybe because your your battery because you've left it for so long and you've no charged it up and the battery's getting old or number two could be a problem with your electric brake it is working but it's it's not releasing fully so therefore it's not releasing fully it's causing the motor to draw more power the easiest way to find this out what you're going to do is i have one of these which is a a laser mm. infrared thermometer so it's an infrared thermometer and what i do when i run the scooter i maybe lift the back wheels up or maybe i go and sit in it myself I'm, I'm quite heavy like so i can sit in the scooter drive about um or from if it's on the rolling road i have the insulating tape on here let the motor spin the yeah, idea will smell it or what i'll then do is measure the temperature of the brake measure the temperature of the brake measure the temperature of the aluminium housing here and the temperature of the motor so you will see a difference of the temperature and you'll know which one's hotter if it's hot in here you know for a fact it's electric brake that caused the issue so that can happen as well after a long period of of storage so to round this up look after your scooter charge it up on a regular basis do not store it in a shed that's damp do not store it outside if you store it outside you, you may find that there'll be some repair bills if you've left it for longer periods of time that happened to this so this one will need a new electric brake um give it a service clean all the contacts because it's been left outside the batteries will be tested but they've been kept inside so they should be all right and i told this customer to charge the batteries up on a regular basis easiest way to remember is calendar that everybody has put it on charge batteries as i say if you can't do it get somebody else to to do it for you it will save you money in the long term as I say, we order a lot of batteries in spring. It's because a lot of people don't listen to us. A lot of people may forget. A lot of people can do it. But I'm trying to save you money here. So hopefully this video was informative to you. If you'd, if you'd like to like and subscribe, leave a comment below of, of problems you have with your scooter that you've left that I've not covered here. Let us know. Uh, and that's it, really. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And